Thank you everyone for joining us for this webinar, Performance Manager Applications for Corporate Audio, presented by Noel Helms. Um, my name is Laura Lawrence. I'm the Global Director of Marketing at Harman, and I wanted to go over a few things before we get started. Everyone on the call is muted so we can keep the noise levels down, but you can send in your questions through the chat function. Um, we'll consolidate those and we'll get those answered at the end. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and the link will be made available a few days after the presentation. We do have a number of other webinars taking place over the next few months for audio, lighting, video, and control. And we'd like to encourage you to take a look at the different webinars in our learning session workshop series. And you can find that on pro.harman.com, as well as visiting Harman Professional University to see our many on-demand and certification courses. And those are always available to you for free. And now I'd like to introduce you to Noel Helms, the presenter for today's webinar. Noel is a veteran audio engineer with over 20 years of experience. He began his career hanging JBL arrays in San Francisco, providing premium sound to the live music scene. Since then, he's used a range of Harman innovation to design, implement, and mix nearly every type of live event imaginable. And now I'll pass the mic over to you, Noel. Before Noel jumps in, um, I'm just gonna say a quick word. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Laura. Uh, for those of you who are new to our performance audio webinar series, thank you for joining us. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. I hope this webinar finds uh, you all at home safe and healthy with your family. As Laura mentioned, um, my name is Chris Gavin. For the past two weeks, I've been hosting webinars on Harman's performance audio software ecosystem. We started by exploring the fundamentals of Line Array Calculator, where we learned how to quickly draw a venue, design a Line Array, verify the mechanical safety of the line array, and export the system to ArrayLink for deployment. Then, last week, we took an introductory look at Performance Manager. I showed you how to quickly deploy a system using the included design templates, how to import a line array from Line Array Calculator Project, and the powerful set of online control tools that make up the Performance Manager workflow. Today, we have a really special webinar. We've invited Noel to show you how he uses the tools we learned about for the last two weeks to design and deploy a show. Building on the concepts we have learned together, Noel is going to show you his full workflow, starting with the design and ending with a performance manager file that is ready to be deployed. Noel will also briefly touch on some subwoofer design concepts that we have not learned about here on this webinar series. Let this be an appetizer for next week's webinar, where we will cover these concepts in depth. During today's webinar, my colleagues Nick Morn and Ronald Gonzalez, along with myself, will be manning the Q&A chat. We will answer any software-related questions that may arise. At the end of the webinar, we will open up the Q&A session to a, a live conversation where you will be able to ask Noel about the design for his show, and the Harman Audio experts will again be able to field any software-related questions you may have. With that, I'll turn it over to you, Noel. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Laura. Thank you, JBL Professional, for having me here today. I'm honored to be here and to share uh, my knowledge with the audience. Let's get started. Quick thing about me. Uh, as mentioned before, I've been an audio engineer since the year 2000. I started off mostly doing monitor engineering jobs uh, in clubs, tours, and a lot of music festivals until about 2006. 2006, I started to make the transition over to corporate audio, and I've been exclusively doing corporate audio since 2007. My clients have included Fortune 100 companies, several different award shows, large frame associations, and government contractors and government shows themselves. I've been JBL factory certified for VTX since 2015, and my favorite speaker is the VTX V25. When you have the weight limits and the uh, size room to Hang that speaker, you're always in a good position. This particular job that we're gonna be talking about today is a heart, heart surgeon live case room. They're not doing surgery in this room, but you will see that there are, is a large stage up there with 14 of the world's top doctors uh, giving live commentary. It's been the same job year over year. I've done it for about 10 years. It's a very high demand client. You will often see at the lectern here a surgeon on one day who in either later that day or the next day will be performing surgery live up on the screen. 
This was in the Moscone Center in Hall A. This room is approximately 300 feet wide and 250 feet deep. We had about 50 feet of backstage area, and so our job was to cover, cover wall to wall, approximately 350 feet and 200 feet deep. It was a big empty hall. This is a solid wall here and a solid wall here, and this is a drape line. Halls B and C were exhibit halls with a very high noise floor from all the doctors checking out all the exhibits. As a note, Hall D had a very similar setup in about half of the room, and Hall E was specialized little centers for the doctors. This is a top-down view of Hall A. This is the speaker design that we used. This is the podium that I mentioned before. Here are the tables, seven doctors per side, 14 total doctors. The stage is about 80 feet wide. We hung six box deep of V20 mains in these positions. Another six boxes of V20 delays, and four boxes of out, four hangs of four box outfills. As a note, if I were able to, with given the higher ceiling parameters, I would have used eight V20s for the entire room. But because of the short ceiling and the high <clears throat> LED wall, I was unable to hang as deep as I wanted, and so we elected to go for two hangs, meaning front line and a delay line. We used 10 stacks of two B18 subs as the sub array. The audience varied in size and shape. The very first session had every chair full and standing room all the way to the back. But subsequently, other sessions had smaller sizes of audience. Sometimes they were all up front. Sometimes they were all in the middle. Sometimes they were standing in the back. Being a big hall, it was very reverberant. So we wanted to use the least amount of PA possible to remain effective. So when we had a front-loaded audience, we would use Performance Manager to mute the delay lines. Or if it was narrow and all the way to the back, but nobody in the wings, we would also use Performance Manager to mute the wing speakers, the outfills. Performance Manager allows that room coverage to vary quite easily. Um, it was a very high critical listening area. Because, as you saw earlier, the heart surgery was done through fluoroscope, the machine is very important. So every beat from the surgical suite and every sound of the surgical suite had to be heard. We elected to use B18 subwoofers. The subs need to be powerful. You might ask why, because it's heart surgery, but we were playing the bumper for each hospital, which was very professionally produced, TV commercial quality. We also played commercials for medical device sponsors. There was no performance on stage during sub activation. It wasn't like we had a band there playing the kick drum. We only used the subs during transition times as the doctors entered and left the stage. We elected for this 18-inch excursion driver from JBL. The mains were VTX V20s throughout. We used this for the main left and right, the center delays, and all the outfills. We asked the mains to cover just, about half, just over half of the room deep and wide. The mains and the delays overlapped approximately 20 feet for ideal coverage. And the outfills were needed due to the width of the audience. We played this room wide, not deep. We used this speaker in two-channel passive mode. The front fills and foldbacks were all Vertec VT4886. It's a very narrow profile speaker, quite clear and well-designed. And it integrates very well with the sound of the VTX V20s. 
It's a single channel, three way design. The amps that we used were Crown V Rack 1200 HDs, 12,000 HDs. We selected this for uniformity. I wanted to just throw the amp racks up. We had some amp racks from a couple different companies, and I wanted to not have to really think about which amp goes where. I wanted to just put them in my program, push the software, and move on. These amps are very powerful. We use them on AES inputs. The three amplifier per rack provided an ideal power balance for subwoofers all the way down the front fills. We also utilized the built-in Ethernet distribution system called V-Drive on the back. You inject AES one time, and then you can use the Ethernet cables to lace it throughout. It's quite simple, quite effective. On to the design. You see here on my screen the mains. We're going to design these together. I'm going to show you my workflow on how I did that. There are six deep VTX V20s. We will also be designing the outfills. All four outfill hangs were designed exactly the same for the exact same coverage. But we're going to do that in just a minute. I'm going to now move into the line array calculator software. I'm going to show you my workflow and how it integrates into Performance Manager. This is the open screen to the LAC line, of calculate, line array calculator. I like to start with the subwoofers, the zero point of my PA. So I click ground subwoofer array. I will give the project name demo subs. And I'm going to continue. So I'm going to go ahead and start building a room right here. I click 20 and hit tab. When there's no new line, it gives you a new line down below. I have these numbers jotted down too. That is the back wall that I just drew. And when I hit tab from there, it auto populated with another line. The software has automatically just put it down here but I'm going to type in the measurements here. I made the house right wall and it auto populated with another wall. This will be the last wall that we build here together. That's the house left wall. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of those walls to delineate what's a wall versus the stage. And if you don't like the color that is given, this button right here will give you a heck of a lot more colors to choose from. Okay, so now we have a stage. My stage was actually a little bit wider, but for time purposes, I'm just going to move on from that. And here is my actual room. So we have a top-down view of the room that I was in. We're going to now move into the mapping section. The mapping section is where you get to choose the cabinets, the array options, and the coverage options. The cabinet I used was the B18. And as I changed that, it changed all of them here. And you can see that it's populated right there, right in front of my stage. We have 10 containers. Now you can click up, up, minus, minus, or you can just highlight, hit 10, and enter. And all of a sudden, I have 10 containers. I had two speakers per container for a total of 20 subs. The subwoofer default is ground stacked on end. Ours are horizontally stacked. And you can see as I did that, it is now a single box in each cluster because this is a top-down view 
I'll put that back real quick to show, show you again. It's hard to see, I guess, because it's pretty small, but there are two subs side by side. And a single sub stacked, but these are actually two on a vertical top down view. Coverage angle default is 60 degrees. That's fine. Spacing method is center to center. We weren't 10 feet apart, we were seven feet apart. And you can now see that my whole array is a bit smaller. Had I adjusted the stage, the stage would have been about that big as well. Okay, and now I'm ready to hit the, the coverage options here, and I'm gonna hit calculate and see what the sound looks like. And as you can see, I've created this really gross power alley right down the middle. The walls up here are deficient in sub sound. And to combat that, to, to alleviate that, you can cal calculate delay times right here. This is the part Chris mentioned that you guys have not quite studied yet, but he's going to get to next week. It's going to set a delay time for everything. The center subs are at zero, and that delay is going out. When you click Calculate, you can see I have a much more even response throughout the room. I'm quite happy with this. This is good even coverage. I'm going to save it. And the subs are done. Clicking new file, we'll open a new one. And we're going to design the main arrays together now. We're going to design a suspended array. I'm going to name this main left right. And continue on. This is the default drawing of architecture the floor, because this is a side view now. The only top-down view is from the subwoofers, crown stack subwoofers. My floor was flat, and I have the dimensions jotted down right here. The only real difference is it was only asked to cover 85 feet, and the back of the room is zero. It's a flat room. You can follow me down here with my mouse. It says listening area or architectural. The last one was architectural because we were actually looking at the stage and the walls. This one's a listening area. The default is standing. My audience was seated. When I click this, you're going to see the listening area drop down to a seated position. There you go. I'll undo that just to show it again. But it starts at standing and it moves to seated. Okay, my venue is done for the map for the mains. We're going to move into mapping. This is the mapping section. This is the default PA that it comes up with. Um, this is the array parameter section, the setting section, and the cabinet section. We're going to start at the top. I didn't use A8s. I used VTX V20s. I did use six. 25 degrees is the default down tilt. I'm not going to worry about that because I'm going to auto calculate in just a moment. I wasn't 40 feet high, I was at 36 feet high. Moving into the V20 settings, speaker preset is V20, that's great. But remember, I'm not four channel active, I'm by amp passive. And it is circuit grouping default in three boxes. That's not what we did. We used two boxes. Let's auto calculate. You can see that button has calculated from the front of the audience to the rear of the audience an even spread. Go to the configuration page quickly. Now, in the Moscone Center, you don't get the luxury of two-point hangs. 
I did a single point hang. That's right here. It's a drop down menu, dual point front to back. It's a single point. And as I hit that, you can see it's an invalid point location because it wants to grab the bar here where there is nothing. That's no problem. In the extension bar position, this piece here. So you just keep clicking until we find a spot. Still have an invalid. Just get a little quick little click. And you can see that the hole is now covered in 12 and software is happy. So this is going to be what we're actually hanging. Go back to mapping. I'm going to click auto calculate again. Change just a little bit. Oh, it changed the array frames position. There we go. Go back to mapping. So at this point, what you want to do is drop in some probes, some listening probes. I like to put mine in between the two circuits, or in between the, the two speakers of the circuit. So that means this top box and this second box are a circuit. So I go to the listening plane, I right click, add frequency probe. The next one is the third box and the fourth box, add frequency probe. Now look, this one, I put it a little bit off center, so I'm just going to click and drag it to where I'm happy, right in the middle. And then we have the fifth and sixth box here, add frequency probe. Now I'm going to go down away from the prediction side to the measurement side. You can see the frequency response for each probe. Three being closer, as a bit more low end, and is a bit louder throughout. So to, to, to alleviate that, I go over here to gain compensation, gain shading, and I drop it down a few TV, dBs. As you can see now, this line is very well matched in the critical listening area, and I'm quite happy with that. I would like to even out some of the response out here. So I open up the LACP, which Chris has talked about. This is the line array control panel. And I can help even out the response by turning on the array size compensation. And you can see as I click this, the shape changes. 2 dBs is much flatter throughout. Check my average. That's pretty darn good. I think I can do a little bit of help on the high end here. I'm going to select uh, circuit 3. I'm going to turn on the throw distance compensation. And I'm starting to see the change somewhere a little bit higher than the default setting of 6.3. I'm going to change that to 8,000 hertz. Hit enter. We're going to drop this down just a little bit, clicking it down so I can watch the line slowly change. That's good. I like that. Let's check the average. Nice and even response. So just as a side note, make sure you understand that this is not room EQ. This is array calibration. So the array sounds the same from the front of the room to the back of the room, or the, the front of the coverage area to the back of the coverage area. I'm happy with this. We're going to save it. Main left, right, click Save, and that's there. 
We're going to move on together and we're going to design the outfills. New file. It is also a suspended array. I named it outfills in the project name. All right, we're back to that same default. I have the actual listening area denoted over here. These speakers were to cover 20 feet in front of it to 78 feet at the back. And again, it's a flat room. So I flatten the floor. It's a listening area. But again, these people are seated, not standing. Moving into the mapping section now. They were V20s. There are a total number of four. Now you can click the minus button. I find it easier just to highlight, hit the number, and enter. And you see now my array is four boxes deep. Again, I'm not worried about the frame angle. That's the default. The array top in this case was 34 feet. We wanted to match the bottom of the outfills to the bottom of the mains for visual aesthetic purposes. Let's move it down. Moving into the V20 sections. Speaker preset V20, that's great. Again, we were not four channel active, we were two channel biamp. And we ran two boxes per circuit. Hit auto calculate. It has splayed it out. I'm going to go to configuration before we move on. This is also a single point hang. And you can see here, this is the center of gravity coming through the, the, the array, right? And it's denoted right here. I'm right in between two dots. I can actually adjust the way that hangs without adjusting the angle at all by manipulating the extension bar. It's a big, long, heavy lever sticking out the back. And by clicking it in, you can move that dot. And at that position, let's go one more. That's too far. So you can see right here, at that position, I'm right in the middle of hole 10. So this is how I would hang it. Go back to mapping real quick. Move into measurement. Here's the top circuit. It's these two boxes. I'm going to drop a frequency probe right there. By highlighting that, I'm not highlighting the line, but touching the line and right clicking this menu comes up. Frequency probe one. Frequency probe two, one for each circuit. Again, you can see two is quite a bit louder at this point. Well, I don't know about quite a bit, but it is louder. We're going to gain shade down. Until it matches. You can see it's matched pretty well here. Here's the average. That's a pretty flat response front to back. I'm happy with that. Let's save it. Great. So now I've designed everything and all of the um, array positions. And we're going to move into Performance Manager bring these in. This is Performance Manager. The workflow goes left to right. We're starting over here on the left. I like to start with my subs, again, the zero point of my PA. Now here you can drag in variable rows or variable columns, but we've already designed our array and line array calculator. 
We've already put in delay times. So all of that will transfer over directly into the amplifiers in the performance manager if we use this box here. So you click it, drag it into the field, and it drops down. And ask which one do you want to use. We want the subs. And there you see we have all the subs. Let me zoom out so you can see the whole picture. Great. Now, in my job, we used one circuit per sub. Oh, and as a, high, as, a, as a side, I want to show this what I just did. I highlighted the point I wanted to see. And instead of clicking the zoom button over here, it hit spacebar. And it zooms in the section that you highlighted. So change those parameters and add speaker section. Remember the workflow goes left to right. You highlight the stack. You've already imp imported from LAC. We want the settings wheel. This comes up here. The sub circuit mode is not one box, it's two boxes. And now you see there that there's a jumper right here. This represents a cable jumper. I'm going to do that across my array. And grab this slider here, since I'm already zoomed in at a nice level, and just slide across the screen until I get to the next section. This is stack 10, so it's my last stack. Zoom out and verify I got them all. They all have jumpers. So that's good. Slide down a little bit and give myself some room. Now, if you remember from my design, we had left, right, and out fills. That's what we're going to do next. Those are all suspended arrays. Gives us these templates. Now you could, if you wanted, drag over four left, right, and now fills. I like to use the Arena 180. And you see it's dropped in these empty boxes here. Go to add speakers. Now you can go in and you can pick your speakers if you want, but we've already done that work. Let's zoom in here so you can see better. So I highlight the area. I tell it to go look at the LAC files. We built the main left, right. I like that. Open. And it populates with the speaker array that we built. We have six deep V20s in circuits of two. And all of the gain shading that we set up in LAC has carried over. Go to the off stage. These are our outfills. Double click there. 
and now the art fills have popularity. I'm going to add the delay line next back to array templates. Grab the arena 180. And as a side note, where you drop it, where you drop your template is exactly where the top left corner of the array template is going to show up. I'm going to give myself a little, little room here. Drop that in. And before I even move on, I like to rename these to, to use them to use the names I'm going to actually use in the field. So this will be my left, right, offstage left, offstage right. And since I only have one delay line, I'm going to go in, highlight the name, These names will appear on the amplifiers themselves. I don't use any tape on the front of the amplifiers. I read the amplifier screen if I need to reference what's doing what. Okay, I'm going to move into add speakers. Again, we've already done the work of import of, of what these speakers are going to be. So we highlight the, the, the container. Tell it to look at LAC. And although we did not build these together, they are nearly identical to the mains. So for, for timing purposes, I pre-built these. These are the same as the outfills. The only difference was the delay times. So zooming out, we now have our main PA. I am going to go back to array templates and add the front fills. It's down here in distributed fills. I did inner and outer front fills. So I'm going to use this template here. I want a single point for my inners. Teeny tiny on the screen, isn't it? There it is. So this one's going to be renamed inner front fills. There are the Vertec 4886. There's two for the inners. See, I highlighted or I clicked up for two. And now we have two inners. I'm going to drag over some the outer front fills. Slide this over. Grab here. Rename outer. Outer front fills, add speakers, I'm still on the same page. And instead of two, I used four for the outers. Click up to four, and I, again, you can just highlight four and get inner. Bring across four, drop them in there. And I am going to highlight all of them. I'm going to go to the top here, align, align tops. That way you don't have to click and drag. The software will do it for you. Makes it nice and pretty. Um, the last thing we have to do in this job for building the PA is the foldback. The foldback was a single Hang 4886s. I didn't need to worry about having the speakers 40 feet away because there were no live mics coming through these speakers. The only thing that was coming through these speakers was the live case feeds and video playback. Go over to add speakers. 
This was six 4886s. So I just hit six and enter. Now this is a six. I could have also just as easily clicked up twice. Grab these, drag them into that container, and now I have a center cluster. We're ready to amplify this, amplify this show. So moving from left to right, we go into Add Amps and DSP. I use 10 amplifiers on this show. But instead of grabbing 10 across the straight, I use them stacked, and I like to model my exact amp land. So when I look at the software, during performance, I know exactly which amp is which. So I grab the top row of five, put it right here. And I grab a bottom row of five, put it just below. So these will represent my actual amplifier stacked backstage. In order to amplify these, you simply click and drag the boxes onto the amps. Once it's yellow like that, the speaker is associated with an amp channel. And as a note, I want to highlight this. You can see it's looking for something else. The software is smart enough to know in this page, the sub is not going to be amplified by a high. It changes as you drag it over. The way that the back of the amplifiers are um, wired, I go vertically down the channel for ease on site of wiring the speakers. I'm just dragging my subs. And associating them to channels. As I mentioned before, the software is smart enough to know what you're doing. So now that when we looked at before, it's all subs. If you click into an empty area and then click the zoom box, it zooms out to your whole venue view. We're almost done amplifying the subs. Now let's say you miss something, like you accidentally drop it over here. Okay, what do you do then? You highlight the speaker, and this button lights up here. Disconnect channel, we'll do it again. See, it's gone now because nothing's highlighted. Highlight that, disconnect channels. Grab it, put it where you actually want it. Great. Subs are done. Next, I'm going to do my main left rights. You could drag each and every one over, but JBL has given us a nice little shortcut. If you highlight the top left, put your mouse over the bottom right, hold shift and click, it highlights the whole thing, it selects the whole thing, then you just drop it into the top left channel of that amplifier and the whole thing is associated. Again, top left, shift, bottom right, drag. I'm going to do the outfills the same way. Now I'm going to go to my delay mains, my delay left, right, excuse me.
Those are all associated. That's great. Great, my mains, subs, and delays are all associated. All that leaves left is the front fills and fold back. I'm gonna use, because of the way that the amps are wired, I'm gonna use the single amp dual channel sections. Grab these enters. And these outers. This is why it's important to label your clusters so that you know exactly which amp is doing what. I'm using my spare channels throughout the rack so I don't have to get another amp rack in. And there you go. We are now associated. We're essentially now ready to go into the room, build the amp racks, and go. And the last things I'm going to show you is the speaker presets section. This is where you set your crossover point. The B18s are set to 80. There is a 60 hertz option. We're going to leave it at 80 because this is spoken word. We're going to match our mains to 80. Right now they come up as full range. I'm going to change it to 80 to match those subs. And the software is smart enough to do the left and right together. This is now 80. You can see the, the outfills are still full range. So I'm going to just grab this one here, click the drop down menu to 80. And as I mentioned before, the software is smart enough that it knows you want them both to go to 80. Same for the delays. My front fills are going to be short throw two because there's two speakers in that in that chain there. I don't need it full range. I'm actually going to go all the way up to 120. These are two circuits of two, so I'm going to use short throw two, 120. My last part is my bit is my fold back. It's up in the air, so I'm going to leave it on long throw. But I don't need it to do any of the low end work. So there it goes. At this point, if we were on uh, backstage together, we would have all the amp racks, amp, uh, amp, uh, uh, all the amp racks would be powered on, and the Ethernet cables would be laced, and we would be able to go online. Unfortunately, like the rest of you, I'm at home. I have no amplifiers here at home. Just give it a minute, it'll respond. All of your discovered devices would show up here. Those would be your amplifiers networked together. We've already associated all of them. So we would hit auto match and send. And since there's nothing networked there, nothing's happening, but you would see little thinking wheels for, I don't know, five, 10 seconds. Then all those amps would pop up in here with these names associated to them. All these VRAC numbers would be right there. I would then edit my groups, add some different groups, outfills, whatnot. These are the factory setups. You do user groups, you click new, and you highlight the ones you want to add. 
and you hit OK. And that's that. At that point, you're going to start handing it off to your A1, or if you yourself are mixing, you're going to start pulling out your smart rate. And I'm going to pass it back to Chris at this point. Awesome. Thank you so much for your presentation, Noel. I always love seeing how uh, third parties, someone who doesn't work for Harman, so our users actually put our software solutions to work. Um, so what we saw Noel do in recap is take an offline design and turn it into a project that he can now bring to his job site and bring online. So he's actually done all the design work for this um, project that we designed at his house, for example, or at the shop. And now he can show up to the job site with all that work already done, hang the PA, bring the system online, and have a, a product that's ready to use. Thank you, Noel, so much for doing this presentation today. Chris, thank, thank you, you for being Yeah, and we really appreciate everybody spending their time with us today. We hope to see you on future webinars. Thanks, and have a great day. Thank you, everybody.